So one of the things that we have not talked about yet is the idea of seam finishes. And if you go to all the trouble to make something, you want it to last. And unfortunately, most woven fabrics do this. They ravel. And with time and with wear, what you make, those seams will ravel until you've got a big mess. And so it won't last as long. So there are ways that you can finish your seams that make them a lot sturdier and a lot less likely to do that. Now, the very first one I would tell you about is called surging or overlocking, and that's what most of your commercial clothes um, have done to them. If you look on the insides of your seams and you will see those loopy threads, um, that comes from a very special kind of machine. We don't have that, and that's okay because there are ways that we can do it without it. So. When I sew a seam, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you just a standard seam. I'm going to make sure my stitch length is on two and a half where I want it. I'm going to stitch, back stitch. Okay, so here's a seam as I would sew it. And there's my ravelly edge that we, you know, we would like to find a way to keep that from being raveled. So there are several different seam finishes. I'm not going to show you all of them. Some of them are very complex. I'm going to show you some of the simplest ones. But each one of them involves having to move to the ironing board. So the first thing I'm going to do here for this first one is I'm going to move over to the ironing board and I'm going to iron what I call booking. I'm going to book my seam. So I'm going to move over to the ironing board and I'm going to make sure and press this out super, super neatly just like that. So hold tight. I'll be back. So I have ironed or booked my seam open. I accidentally matched my leaf up. That was nice. Um, and now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do some adjustments to my machine. So I'm on straight stitch. That's what I have been on. And I'm going to change to zigzag, which is 12. So always before you change, you make sure your needle is in the up position. And then I'm going to turn until I'm on 12. Now, when you use 12, because the needle is going to go back and forth, you have to make sure you have a foot that has a wide slot opening. A and B are both good choices. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab these threads and I'm going to set my width as an estimate at about three and I'm going to get a little scrap of fabric and I'm going to do my width about three and my length, let's say right there, just right at two. And I'm going to just do an experiment and see if I like the looks of that. Okay. So I'm going to go in the up position. So if you can see that, that's my zigzag. I think I want them a little closer together. So I'm going to come down even just a little, and I'm going to make it maybe a little wider. So let me check that. Always do a test on your zigzag um, just to make sure you've got everything set the way you want it. Okay, I like that better. So we're going to go with that. That's the settings I'm going to use. So before I do my zigzag, I'm going to look very carefully right here at my needle. So can you drop the camera down? Yeah, right there. Now, if you notice, my needle goes to the right and it goes through a stitch and then it hops over to the left and does a stitch. To do this, I'm going to want it to be as far over to the right as it can be without dropping through the foot. So I'm going to roll it through a couple of stitches to make sure, yep, that's where I want it, right there because I need to use that to line this up. So I'm gonna take this seam and I'm gonna grab the right side of it and fold underneath so that the seam itself, the seam allowance, is exposed and my actual fabric is tucked back behind. And I'm gonna come over here and line it up so that that needle is in its far right position and I'm gonna drop it right on the edge of my fabric, okay? now. As I go, I'm gonna have to go pretty slow to keep that zigzag so that the right side of it is just catching the edge of my fabric. Now, slow for me and slow for you may be different. It's okay, I've been doing this for about 30 years now, so I may move a little faster. It doesn't mean I know much more. <laughs> okay, so there has zigzagged that edge. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing before I start. I'm going to make sure my needle is on its right side of its zigzag and I'm going to drop my needle on that right side and then let it come back 
forge the seam, tucking under again so that I don't catch my, my pretty part of my fabric. Okay, so there is seam finish number one, and although that is not as nice as you would get with a serge seam, it is durable and it will keep your fabric from fraying for a much longer time.